Hello and welcome to Beyond the Scale, Weight Loss and Wellness. I'm your host, Coach Monica. I'm joined today by Coach Darcy, and we are here to guide you through the ins and outs of a lifestyle that's transformed not just our lives, but the lives of countless women navigating the waves of perimenopause and menopause. Whether you're here to shed weight, understand your body better, or simply find a community that gets it, you're in the right place. So sit back and enjoy the next few minutes as we tackle the hot issues of today. Welcome to Beyond the Scale. Hey, Coach Darcy, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. I am loving the outside weather right now. If you're listening to us live, it is like May 2nd. We made it. Yes, it is. And, <laughs> and it's, it's nice. Shiny. Oh my gosh, it's nice outside. I was just sitting here with a client and I heard a lawnmower right outside my window. So I had to shut the windows because I knew we were going into the studio and now I'm a little warm. <laughs> but <laughs> But it's beautiful outside and our signal is great today. So yes. that's a good sign. So cross yay. our fingers. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the show today. We are going to talk about something that is very near and dear to our hearts. So I always like to joke that when we work with clients, um, you know, 10% of what we do is calories and macros. And 90% of what we do is dealing with the emotions and dealing with uh, things like emotional eating and, um, you know, eating disorders, uh, food addiction the hard stuff, the stuff that the doctors don't want to take care of. So they hand you a meal plan and say, go lose weight. Yeah, right, doc. How's that going to (laughs) happen? So today we're going to talk about something um, very specific. um, And it's a passion of mine. And I don't know, is it a passion of yours too? I mean, it can be, (laughs) probably is. (laughs) You deal with it every day. We do. I deal with it myself. So exactly. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk about five ways to help relieve and help eliminate binge eating. Mm -hmm. When we say binge eating, um, Darcy, what what do you think of when you think of the words binge eating? I think of the words like emotional. Um, I like to think of the words like over uh, overeating things that are not necessary. Um, what's my, I, I, those are the top two ones right now. Yeah. I think about right. when I was cleaning my front closet about mm. two years ago, I lost 120 pounds seven years ago, but two years ago I cleaned my closet and I found a hidden Snickers wrapper and it took me back to the day where I remembered that I'd been hiding in the closet with a bag of Snickers candy. I think it was probably the kids candy that I was eating. <laughs> And I ate a whole bunch and I found all of the wrappers because I didn't want anybody to, um, I didn't want anybody to know that I had just had five candy bars. And so I had binged. And um, I think of the time that almost opposite of binge eating, but the time that I was at Pizza Hut and the man came up to my table after I had gone to the salad bar, the pizza bar, and I had filled my plate, three plates full of pizza. And he asked me if I was going to eat all that. And so I ended up not eating any of it. Um, and so it's kind of the opposite of binge eating, but I was yeah. a lot of a the lot emotional of, part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When we talk to clients, um, well, and I always say you and I are one breath away from an eating disorder. Mm-hmm. If we're not careful, if we're mm-hmm. not careful, if you don't do the things we're talking about today, we are all under the threat of an eating disorder. And in fact, we live in a diet culture right now that, you know, it, di- dieting is the thing which leads to disordered eating, right? Right. So it's something that is very important. So we're going to talk about five things that we can do to stop the binge eating um, disorders. And I think um, I'm going to start out by saying that if we are really in tune to our bodies, which is what we teach our clients to do, your body will talk to you. The problem is past diet years, or because we're full of shame, because we're feeling guilty for eating, we don't listen to them. I remember shoving things in my mouth so quickly because apparently if you get it in your mouth really quick, the calories don't count or nobody will see you. I didn't like anybody. I didn't like anyone watching me eat. I still struggle with that now. Um, and you know, 
afraid that people are going to judge me by what's on my plate, which in my, in my world, they actually do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, so oh, true. <laughs> you're allowed to eat that. You're a coach. Are you eating that? Right. <laughs> but if we slow our worlds down and that's the biggest thing that we want to talk about today. And if we listen, our bodies do talk to us. When we are threatened with binge eating or eating, let's define it. It's it's eating a lot, eat, overeating to the point that you're getting sick. It's hiding when you're eating, eating a boatload of food, going from one thing, you know, how you eat a whole bag of chips and then you go for the bag of cookies and mm -hmm. you just can't stop yourself. Um, it is important if you want to stop this to start to listen to your body. We have to find the trigger emotion that's behind it. So I do an activity with my addictions clients, and I think it can also be used here. It's kind of the same, but different. Um, but I will ask them if I, if I have a client who's fallen off the wagon in my addictions world, and, and in my addictions world, there's no moderation. So there's no, no sugar, no sweet, nothing. I mean, it is complete abstinence. So if I have a client who's fallen off the wagon is in, in relapse, We'll break it down and, and I'll ask, okay, so you had, you had 10 cookies. <laughs> you know, first of all, we get rid of the shame. We understand that we get back up on the wagon. We, you know, we're, we're working towards, um, towards, uh, healing. Um, but I will say, okay, let's, let's go beyond the cookie. When were things really good? When were you on track? When were things going extremely well for you and you were on plan? And they'll tell me what that is. And I'll say, okay, then what happened? And they'll say, well, um, my daughter came home from curfew late and she was pretty upset. Okay. Then what happened? Well, I talked to her. I talked her through it. Um, you know, we talked, um, we talked about the dangers of, you know, stranger danger. We did all this and I talked her through it. And, and then my son came in and he was under another crisis. All right. Then what happened when we take it all the way back to then what happened, we find out that the, the incident or the relapse did not happen with the cookies. The relapse happened way back that morning when the husband woke up and said he wanted a divorce. Or that's very exaggerative. Could be that less. was very extreme. That was very extreme. It could be the <laughs> hubby woke up and said, "Hey, when are you doing the dishes today?" Mm, you know, okay, could yes. be. So the relapse didn't happen with the cookies. The re relapse happened back mm -hmm. with the hubby, right? Right. That led to the daughter. The sequence is way out of order. Yes. On that. But you understand what I'm yes. saying. So yes. the point of that is, we have to break this stuff down. And we have to learn from our mistakes and we have to learn from our binging tendencies and learn to find the trigger. We got to figure out what triggers your binge eating episodes. It could be things like stress, emotions, certain foods, certain smells, certain situations. Once you identify these, you slow the world down a little bit and you can say, oh, I remember I've marked that down. I did what Darcy told me to, and I journaled about it. This is what happens when I face this smell, this emotion, and I can slow the world down a bit and let my body talk to me. And then I know that binge is coming, and then we can do the next step, right? So we got to slow right. the world down, listen to our body, and find the triggered emotion. Um, there's always an... there's. There's always a surface emotion, and that emotion is, I want a cookie. That's a surface emotion, right? When you dig down and understand and you begin to understand why you're eating 10 cookies, that's the underlying, that's the, that's the underlying, that's the binge um, start. That's, that's the starting point for that binge, okay? Darcy, do you, do you have any thoughts on um, the second way that we can stop? So we've got to slow the world down. We got to find the trigger emotion. Then what? Well, then um, my my suggestion would you know really hone in on the tracking. Uh, that is going to prevent you know like working on a prevention and making sure that you are not um, being caught off guard mm. and letting that, letting that guard down is going to then let those emotions control you. And then you, you know, go to what 
part you were just talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, if you struggle with binge eating, I like to encourage my clients to pre-track the things um, so that they are mindfully creating a meal for them so that they are not hungry. And if they know that they have just had a decent meal and they shouldn't be hungry, then they need to then go to that being in tune with what's happening in the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, am I am, am I being bored? Am I emotional? Am I actually hungry? Did I not eat enough? So you're going to be able to answer a lot of those questions um, based on the fact of tracking. And I know a lot of people out there don't like the tracking, but it's just like journaling. It's just documenting stuff about yourself and you learn about how you work and what you need Um, what if based on like, do I, am I going to need more fats today? Am I going to need more proteins? Like Mm -hmm. you're, you are a bio-individual person. Not everybody's going to fit in the same box as you. So you have to be able to identify and collect this data on yourself. Um, so when you, you know, set your meals in place and you can look at it and you can see, oh, well, I'm really low in, in the fats I and I need to be, or I'm really low in the calories because lately my energy level's been really just terrible. Um, then you're going to be able to see, oh, well, yeah, of course, for a few days in a row, I have not had an, an adequate amount of calories. Um, or you can look at to see what you haven't been getting an adequate amount of. So you can then go and look and then adjust as needed. And then, you know, it's set in place. Mm -hmm. That's going to help you prevent from being wishy-washy about it. It's already set in place. You don't have to think about it anymore. You just know this is what I'm having. And that's going to help you prevent going into that, that, um, well, I could probably, you know, have some extra food while I'm sitting here watching my movie or, you know, if you're going to, if you know that you're going to have something for while you watch a movie, pre-track it then you know it's already there. So that would yeah. be, that would be, a, I was probably more a solution to prevent no, the binge eating, really but good. yeah. That was that's really good. A, yeah. Because some people aren't eating enough and then that's why they, they get into this hangry mode. And if they just know, if they look at their macros and see, well, I had 600 calories left anyway, then they're yeah. not going to pick up and they're not going to act hangry and right. want, to, want to binge. Yeah. Well, then I want to add on top of that because we're already in like the tracking world. I'll just add about our, you know, drinking water is really important. Mm -hmm. But drinking water throughout the day, not just like kind of binge drinking water too. Like (laughs) that's not good. But I also learned a a thing um, and I've been... Uh, I've been putting that into practice and I always thought like, well, what is this wrong thing to do? But I don't think it is. (laughs) Um, It's where when you are sitting down at a meal... You're not drinking your liquid in while you're eating. You're going to drink it afterwards so that you eat your food. All those nu- nutrients are in your gut, all ready to go. And then you top it off with water and then continue drinking the water after your meal. But um, I think that's really helpful so that you are not, you know, filling your stomach full of liquids up front. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, an hour later, that's why we're hungry because- yeah you know, you are not making your meals count. You are, you are just doing these snacky things in your meal and then filling it up with water. And then an hour later, Mm -hmm. we're hungry again. So yeah, Yeah, that is so true. And and Mm -hmm. also I read along the same lines of drinking afterwards is your gut has to have the acids to digest the food that you're eating. And Mm -hmm. so I even read somewhere and I don't know how this compares to yours, but I read to wait a half hour after to not do it before or during, wait a half hour after and drink because then your body has the time to, to process those chemicals in the digestion Yeah, because they're needed. And when you put water in there, you water it down to, would, throughout the meal. You water it down. We must have li- yeah. listened to the same person. Wait, I, I don't know who it was. Like we're in sync but here. <laughs> we are. Yeah, totally, totally read that. But um, it makes you wonder if if that is going to allow set like, well, I'm thirsty when I'm eating. Well, cool. Maybe if you, we slowed down our eating process, I know you mamas yeah. out there, you rush and that's because I'm adding myself into that. 
Like we are fast eaters. We don't take our time when we eat our food. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that process of eating quickly, yeah, it will make you thirsty in between. So maybe if you took your time to slow Mm -hmm. down, with you smaller didn't even, bites. You didn't even oh. know it, but that was point number three. Oh, I'm That's sorry. So how sync we are in. Is that sorry, not, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was totally yeah. on purpose. That was amazing. Yeah. Uh, we could, we should totally take the show on the road. We, we should, should totally do really. <laughs> <laughs> but mindful eating is absolutely oh. that's what it, that's the official title is mindful eating. It is. But eating slowly. And I don't know how moms do that because I'm in the empty nest stage. And so I am learning to enjoy my food so much better, but eating slowly, um, ask nurse Cindy calls it the 20 chew challenge, (laughs) you know, and and I've never been able to get 20 chews into my food. Um, but savoring each bite again, it goes back to the first thing of letting your body talk to you, eating slowly, savoring each bite, and then noticing how you feel. You know, uh, Coach Darcy and I right now are doing a 30-day carnivore challenge, and I am noticing so many things. When I removed all of the food noise and all of the 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 noise that those you know we we eat pretty clean keto you know mm-hmm. but we now do. we are at the top of the top of the food chain literally um and and i'm noticing every single thing that my body's doing changing um and just just noticing wow you remove those chemicals you're starting to feel and think clearly coach that's probably why you and i are on the same bullet point and we don't even have the same notes in front of us <laughs> cuz we have <laughs> such mental clarity it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> but it's so uh, true we need to slow down and be mindful paying attention you know i even uh, my husband's a hunter and i i I read this somewhere and I thought, oh boy, that is just kind of a hippie thing, but thanking the animal, you know, thanking, um, you know, thanking God for the animal that he gave us the, Mm -hmm. um, just slowing down and enjoying every single bite. You're not going to eat as much. You're going to enjoy it. And you're also going to think before you stuff the crazy things in your, in your mouth. So Mm -hmm. yeah, identifying triggers, mindful eating, tracking. Those are three, which brings us to probably one that we don't like to talk about. The only empty altar call that I've ever given in my life (laughs) as a coach, and that is practicing stress management. Oh yeah. I don't even know. Do you want me to talk about this one? Because I might be hurting people (laughs) when I talk about it. It's so frustrating because people are not willing to do this. They're like, no, I'll starve myself. I'll shoot myself in the stomach. We don't have the soapbox music with this. We don't with this contraption okay. we're using, but it's upsetting because people are willing to do everything in the world. They'll shoot themselves. They'll take a pill. They'll do everything except get rid of their stress and take, say no, take it away. Take it away. Yes. They don't want to say no. And no. no is a complete sentence. Yes. And when we fill our schedules, I mean, we're not going to talk about uh, being an owner of a business because that's another breed. Oh yeah. <laughs> that, that is, that is Monica breed right over here. Like that is uh, being able to work for her is, is, is better <laughs> not owning a business. Um, but even so with I come moms, home for vacation, <laughs> I know until you be, <laughs> that's so true, but you know, moms and dads, they fill their schedule up. They're so focused on work. And I understand that money makes the world go round. That makes us, you know, at ease. It makes us, um, you know, feel, have that safety net, totally understand that. Um, but it's when we feel like, we even if there's like an a little empty space in our calendar that mm-hmm. oh we can fill it mm-hmm. there's this empty space or this one this one canceled so now we can replace mm-hmm. it with this other thing and you're constantly constantly on the go mm-hmm. and what happens if you don't have anything on the calendar you don't know what to do with yourself because mm-hmm. this is out of the norm mm-hmm. um so we have trained our world that we live yeah. in in this convenience convenient living type of world yeah. that we have to fill our calendars. We yeah. have to have something for every second of the day mm-hmm. and not yeah. taking time for self-care yeah. is not on that list right. at all. We have a yeah. metabolic health crisis here and I'm going to read you some statistics that I just wrote down today. And Dr. Mindy Peltz called this stirring the hurt. And Mm. I hope I do this with our listeners today because it stirred my hurt. 
and it made me want to really get mad. Here's some statistics right here in America. Only 7% of Americans have good metabolic health. That means 93% of us struggle with our metabolic health. Metabolic health, by the way, is um, the insulin and glucose in our system that are not in balance, causing all of these chronic diseases, diseases of human civilization, as Dr. Barry calls them. And 93% of us are struggling. 60% have one chronic disease. Now, a chronic disease is a disease that is a lifestyle problem. So that means it can be fixed. Think about that. 60% of Americans have hmm. one, 40% have two or more. 8 million people, this is worldwide, are obese. And obesity kills more people than smoking. Wow. Now, let's break it down to women. Women suffer the most. 41% of our women are obese, over 21 years old. 45% of our women have high blood pressure, now you're gonna get mad, coach. One <laughs> out of five women will develop Alzheimer's. What? Alzheimer's is type three diabetes caused by sugar. One Listen. out of eight, <sighs> yeah, one out of five women. One out of five. One out of eight women will de develop thyroid problems. Again, chronic, these are changeable. One yes. out of nine women will have type two diabetes, which is reversible. One out of five women uh, can't get pregnant within a year of trying. That is mm. that is breathtaking right there. Yeah. And that yeah. is preventable. 80% of autoimmune conditions are happening to women. This is RA. This is Hashimoto's. This is lupus. 45. To, oh, this one breaks my heart. I hope I'm stirring the hurt a little bit. 45 to 55 years old is when is the most common time for a woman to commit suicide. Mm. Yeah, it is insanity what is happening. And this is happening because of our diet. This is right. happening because here is the here is the reason one of the failed five. There's fail, she talks about failed five diets. Cortisol spikes. Cortisol will spike your glucose. Glucose will release your insulin. Releasing insulin into the cells that can't take anymore is what is causing these problems. You can literally stop this. Mm -hmm. Cortisol spikes glucose. Cortisol, it's like sticking a lollipop in your mouth all day long, constantly spiking your insulin. But these women, I'm speaking to women, men can, you know. They have their ways. They have their we, ways. They still have, they still have cortisol and they still oh, they have do. insulin. So it they counts. Do. But these women <laughs> believe that they're superwomen and that they yeah. should carry the weight of the world on their 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 shoulders yeah. and they re they refuse to get rid of the stress. They will say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. you no, know, you don't have to say yes to your church. You don't have to say yes to your class, your kid's classroom. You can say no. That darn TikToker, Terrence, Terrell, <laughs> Terrence. Is it Terrence? Right, well, you might as well just name him Terrence. I'm going to name that's him Terrence. A... I love okay. him. I love him. He and I are very different when it comes to, to what we eat. <laughs> but he said, we need to we need to build our no muscle. And yeah. That is so true. Yeah. I think his name is Chris, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, Chris. We're going with Terrence because Terrence, you Chris always Terrence, call him you're Terrence. You're my hero. <laughs> Chris Terrence. I don't know. <laughs> Watch there be somebody that's actually Chris Terrence Probably. on TikTok and they're like, oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, it is really sad. You guys have got to stop the cortisol. You have got to start saying, yeah, saying no. Yeah. And stop you know, you might yes. not have any form of ailments starting uh -huh. to arise. You might be on the thin side of the spectrum mm -hmm. and you are living life eating the way you are, yep. are eating and doing the things that you're doing. And, and then all of a sudden it's going to, mm -hmm. you're going to get clotheslined. Mm -hmm. um, you still need to be concerned about the cortisol. You yeah. still need to be concerned about your inner body health, mm -hmm. not just because I'm not overweight or because yeah. I can eat anything and still be this thin. Like you need to worry about, mm -hmm. I would love to get this soapbox out, but I know we're not talking about it today, but you need to worry about w what the quality of food you yeah. are consuming is yeah. and being able to say that word, no, like oh, we'll, we'll, add, we'll tag that in too late. Yeah. Yes. I have a really sad story. So I have a friend on Facebook 
um, who for years has been, has, has been struggling with his health. And his doctor finally said, all right, you got to go on metformin. And he was all panicked. So I'm like, he's an older man. And I offered to coach him for free. I said, I can reverse that. You do not have to go on that. Call me, set up a time with me. I will coach you for free. I was desperate to see this man get better. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to start the metform, but the doctor pressured him into it. I said, call me. I will meet with you for free. He didn't have time to meet with me. Chose not to meet with me. Just saw a Facebook post this week that said, um, I'm having, I, the metformin is killing him, basically. That's what's happening. And he's having kidney issues because of the metformin now. I was just, I was just mad at him. I was just mad at him. I, I wanted to have sympathy, but I'm like, you told me no. You know, six months yeah. ago, we could have reversed this. And I, I did post on his page. I'm like, I wish you would have let me help you. And mm -hmm. he said, now I wish I had listened to you. And yeah. it's so sad. People do not care about their health until they're dying. Until they see that grave sign that's yeah. like yelling at their name. And yeah. they, yeah, we have, why do we wait till we're at rock bottom or ground bottom to. Yeah. to be able to change things around? Like, yeah, invest yeah. in your future. You now. Stop, yeah. stop waiting. Yeah. yeah. And that has nothing to do with binging, but do we have anything happy to so talk we, about? <laughs> well, we have to, we have to talk about the last one because we told them we had five. So we oh. had, uh, being a mindful eater, uh, mm -hmm. finding the triggers, um, planning, tracking, um, stress management and seeking support. Mm -hmm. You got to ask for help guys. Yeah. If you have a binge eating problem, if you have an emotional eating problem, if you have an obesity problem, if you have a type two diabetes problem, problem, if you have a metabolic issue, if your hormones are messed up and you can't get pregnant, now's the time you call us. Don't mm -hmm. wait until it's too late, until you can't reverse these things. Yeah. You've got to seek support. If you're struggling with binge eating, this is what we're here for, right? Um, reach out to a therapist reach out to a friend, say, I can't do it. That's the first thing that my addictions clients have to do. They have to say, I can't do it by myself. Right. Complete surrender. I can't do it by myself. I need a coach that will help me through this. And if people knew that they're not the only ones mm. in this world that mm -hmm. need somebody else to help them, mm -hmm. do you think that they would be more apt to say, yes, like right. I do need help? Yeah. There's a lot and of we shame. We see it. We yeah. see it every day. We see all this all the shame. We mm -hmm. see all of these other people struggling mm -hmm. and, and reaching out for help. So yeah. no, you're not alone at yeah. all. You're probably, there's probably more people like you than are not like you. But right. the problem is, is because there's such a stigma around binge eating, emotional eating, obesity, there's such a stigma around it that people don't want to talk about it and they don't want to say, I have a problem. And right. we're just or, normalizing it. Yeah. Right. Or as when yeah. I was, when I was a diagnosed as a food addict, that was the best day of my life because that's when I started to heal. Whereas the other side of that happens and they're like, oh, see, there's nothing I can do because I'm a food addict. So then they rely on the excuses. Um, and so you have to, you've got to own it. You've got to own it. Say, I've got a problem and you've got to seek support. Um, that's what our group is for. That's why I love our group. And right now we've got two groups running. We've yeah, got, we do. We've got We're a, whoo. We're real busy right now. <laughs> real busy. Yeah. We've got an amazing group of 150 carnivores right now. Oh. Um, it's, it's so much fun. We are having a ball and we're doing it with them. And so, um, we're having a ball doing that. And then we've got our regular, um, uh, food, um, food freedom support group, uh, where those are our clients that we meet with once a week. And then we meet with mm -hmm. them as a group and they're, they're just, they're really good friends now. They're, yeah. they know that they're not alone. And then I've got yeah. my addictions clients. So anyway, um, reach out to us, set up an appointment with coach Darcy or myself, go to kmhealthcoaching.org and you will find both of our faces on there and you'll find our schedules. My schedule's a little bit more packed, um, yeah. at this point of my life. <laughs> We just invited 150 more friends into my life, um, <laughs> but thankfully you're there to help me. <laughs> I got you back, boo. You're in there. <laughs> you're in there talking all the yes. meat, all the yes. meats. Yes. So how are you uh, feeling? How are you feeling? On I, so how many days is this for you, carnivore? I think this is day three. Okay. I know that I'm. I'm. Okay. I am just. I'm excited to see what I'm gonna feel. But yeah, you know, when I can say, oh, this is day 23. I can't wait till I can say that. Yeah. Um. Because it's pretty bad right now, honestly. 
I'm not, it's not terrible. No, for me. Yes. Like I've, there's been some hints. I think something's about to happen. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's like one of those catch you off guard. Like, oh, you're great. Oh, wait a minute. I know. I know. <laughs> you got a lot of toxins in this body. Um, I'm, yeah. And yeah. What so. surprised that it surprised me because as a coach, we're thinking, oh, we're, we're perfect. No, we're not. Well, because we're, we're keto and we're yeah. very clean. Yeah. I thought for sure I wouldn't have the detox, but I am. I am having yeah. a lot of the, the dumping, um, syndrome. Oxalate. 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 Dumping. Yeah. Oxalate. Oxalate. Yeah. I had gotten Sorry. a little bit loose on the veggies. Mm -hmm. So yep. yeah. I ate a lot of celery. Oh yeah. Not today. Not yeah. like this before. Yeah. Um, but I, it was funny cause I asked Mark, my husband, like mm -hmm. how he feels. Cause he's doing this with oh, yeah. me, like Brian, Brian, yeah. your husband's doing this. Um, I asked him how, how things are going. He's like, I feel great. I have, I've heart. I don't do anything different normally. I'm like, okay, mister, right. I put sauce on everything <laughs> and I have salads dumped yeah. with like, yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah, mine is, mine is the almond guy and he, mm. his knee is hurting really bad. And I mean, he could barely walk last night. And oh, I man. think that that's an oxalate um, yeah. dump because he was really addicted to almonds. Right. So we're going to change those to probably pecans, I think. Um, those are a little bit better. Um, tell yeah. him that his coach advises to yeah. lessen the almonds because of the lectins on those almonds uh -huh. are probably yeah. not great for his gut. Right. And I told him <laughs> I'm not his coach. Yeah. So I should start <laughs> texting him now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What'd you have to eat today, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> How those almonds doing? Uh, so based on, based before we, I don't know if you were wrapping things up, but the one thing I wanted to say is this word procrastination has been yelling at me through this whole mm. podcast. And the word, like there's two ways with pro procrastination. Procrastination of obviously like not putting yourself, your health first and keep putting things off and keep putting things off. And, you know, all of these things that we have, talked about is a way of procrastination because mm -hmm. you're not taking care of you. Uh, you are overly stressed and you, and, and in, in the end, we all know you're saying, well, eventually someday I'd like to take care of this someday. Mm -hmm. So don't wait for someday to happen because it might not happen. I mean, that's, that's a dark, we're talking dark and grim today anyway. So I might as well say it might not happen mm -hmm. someday. It might just, you know, end unexpectedly. And if you are not taking care of you and you keep putting off things, then yes. Yeah. Um, the other form of procrastination that I was talking about, or was, I'm going to talk about is, you know, with the, um, you know, pre-tracking and the binge eating, like procrastination is a great gateway to eating and binge eating. So just be careful with those, with that one. Just know that um, if you are bored, we like to say, you know, get up, walk out of the, mm -hmm. out of a different place and not into your kitchen or your pantry, mm -hmm. go outside, do something else that will distract you. So those were the two forms of procrastination. I just wanted, I yeah. just felt like I needed to define that. Yeah. Um, I should have started with the other one, but it's all, it's all good. Yeah. It's no, all good. Those are really good. Yeah. Those are really good. Yeah. I love, I love when you say get up and walk away because you mm -hmm. got to slow down. You got to be mindful. You got to know your triggers and then you got to walk away. You walk away from that closet. You you go out. You do some grounding outside in nature. You put your feet in the in the in the grass. You look up at the sun. You do something completely opposite of what your what your um, binge eating was t telling you to do. And mm -hmm. You walk away. Yeah. The other thing is, is this is pretty hardcore. But you get the crap out of your house. Yeah. Don't yeah. have that crap in there. Get it out. I don't care if you have kids or not. I really don't. I care about you more than I do your kids. Right? Mm -hmm. Why would we feed our kids the poison anyway? Like get the crap out of the house and then you won't binge. Mm -hmm. I've not seen a lot of people binge on steak or, um, you know, the healthy stuff. Now, not a lot of people binge on broccoli, right? You binge because it's there. You haven't, you haven't met Silas. <laughs> oh, does he like steak? <laughs> no, I was going to say he, he will eat like cartons of blueberries and cartons oh, yeah. of, of, oh, yeah. uh, broccoli and peppers, like Go, dude. <laughs> tomatoes. Like we can't. <laughs> Oh, that remember when we were kids, we would get blisters on our, oh our, yeah. Cause of eating tomatoes like apple. <laughs> All right. Maybe people do binge on that. I mean, it is a better choice. <laughs> better choice. Better of the best, right? Yes. Yeah. 
All right. Well, we are here every Tuesday. By the way, if you would like a free coaching group, go to our uh, Facebook groups. My it, mine is yeah. called uh, Addiction Food Addiction Recovery. You'll find the links to our free group. Star Sears is called the Weight Loss Project. The Weight Loss Project. Those yeah. are our two groups where we do a lot of free coaching in those groups. Go in there and check it out. Put the links in the show notes. We got a lot of really handy dandy links in the show notes now. I worked on that yesterday. So uh, got a lot of free stuff in there. So go check Amazing. the show notes out. And we are here every Tuesday morning. We drop a brand new live show every Tuesday morning. And uh, so we'll be back next week. Hey. Wait a minute. Yeah. We yeah. need to tell our, our friends to, you know, like, follow and share and yeah. subscribe, all those things because the things. that matters. Would you and leave, leave us a review? review. Yeah. yeah. Leave us a review on Apple. That really, really helps our algorithm. It helps us get our message out to more women and men. Yep. All right, guys. We will see you next Tuesday. Bye.